G'day, how you going? I'm Ian Atlas here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video channel. I want to ask you, are you a beginner artist out there? You're looking for tutorials on YouTube? Uh, you want to know how to paint, let's say, landscapes, moonscapes, waterscapes, sunsets, all sorts of the desirables that you're looking for when you're a beginner. All right, well, um, you saw that um, picture in my opening credits here. I'm gonna teach you, as a beginner, how to paint that, the way I paint it, but you can achieve it. And it's gonna take a bit of practice and time, like it did for me, but I'm gonna show you now on this canvas panel here, there's the sizes in centimeters and inches. And also, I'm gonna get some colors coming up the screen here for you as well to look at. So this is where you can pause it, write those colors down, and watch the video and see what's going to happen and then practice the procedures and paint along all right if you've been painting for a while you can start painting straight away but if you're an early beginner you're just getting into it watch people like me and others and learn procedures like clouds and blending you know clouds they can be so easy but my god they can be so hard at the same time as well okay all right, so without further ado, I want to get you all over here and we're going to look at my canvas panel. This is a canvas on a panel, okay? It's a good quality canvas covering this panel, all right? So I found this photograph on Pixabay. It's a free website and um, it's got some elements I want to teach a beginner like you out there that's watching me right now how to do. So we've got a very moist, wet, cloudy damp sky up there the mist is coming down the mountain ridge tops here and it's kind of a void inside the mountain where there's a lake and there's all these pine trees and a bit of a road but I want to break it up and change it a bit I want this lake to come onto this land and wash against the shore here and there can be a path leading into it okay but look at a reference photo and work out what you want to change about it or what elements are in there and learn how to paint those elements and put it into a painting. So if you're new to my channel, I'm going to start with the sky so we can get our sky to blend like oil. So I've got some craft paint, it's soft body paint, I call it flow paint, and I've got a, a medium in it called retarder. It's a clear retarder and that slows down the drying time of your acrylic paints. Because the more you use acrylic, the more you'll realise they can dry quick and be very chalky. So I'm only going to be blending the sky in this composite, so I want to come across and get the sky area primed up, so to speak, with this flowing white student quality poster paint and the retarder that's mixed in it, because it's going to allow me to blend some, if I want, clouds. But I, I want to keep the flavour that was in that profile picture, the mist and the dampness in the air, okay? So I have in the tube phalo blue, but this has got a red shade obviously mixed into it. It's an interactive acrylic paint, very good quality paint, these ateliers. Now that's going to be my colour, but I don't want it to be blue, I want it to be a grey blue. So I've got some toning grey mid out of a tube, okay? You can mix up a grey, mix up a grey, learn the colour wheel if you're a beginner. Okay, so we're going to have that. And just here I have some retarder in a container, so I'll just dampen the brush with retarder. Get a lot of it back off, just so the brush is contaminated with that clear retarder. It looks like linseed oil, but it's not an oil. Now, I want to mix up a silvery blue for the sky. And we don't want it very dark, so we'll get a bit of white and keep lightening that colour value till it's the silvery blue I want. So my sky, I want to just go across the page and lace it onto that wet white stuff. Okay. Now you cannot do this with acrylics unless you have it treated the way I've just treated it on here with that retarder and the student white paint there. You do that on a raw canvas, it's going to be very breaky like that. Okay, all right, so we've got pretty much our 
sky value there. Now I'm just going to get a blending brush. I've got a two inch one, just something from the hardware store. And I want to soften all the brush marks out so that looks like it's been put on there by some wonderful spray painting machine or something. I don't know, it's just a way to sit all the paint down. If you want to keep brush strokes in your work, by all means do that. Now keep your paints on the palettes. I'm going to spray some misty water over that just so when I come back to them they're not going to have too much of a skin on it. I'm just going to pick up some more of that toning grey on its own now. And I can get some grey values within that sky. That's all I want to do. This is To me this is going to add some flavours and depth. Grab yourself the blending brush again, wipe it as you go. And we want to sit all that grey down now and merge it with that silvery blue colour that we've mixed. Just like that, okay. Can you see what's happening there? There we go. We've upped the ante with the sky quality. We've put another colour in there and it's not just one simple colour, but it's something a beginner can practice and learn and put into a painting. All right, I'm looking quite happy with that. It's got me that happy, it makes me want to whack that kettle on and have a cup of tea when I have me break. I'm gonna have a break, and when I have me break, I'm gonna have a cup of tea, and I like to have a bicky with me cover. So that has been dried, because now we've done our sky, we want to put in the next stage coming forward to the front of our painting. And down here, I've washed me two inch thin synthetic brush this is what I like to apply large amounts of paint with I've got raw umber and burnt umber okay and I've got some white and we want to map in our mountain range or cliff face that's up there so I've just dampened the brush a bit we'll go for this one first and that's going to allow the paint to transfer off the brush onto the canvas when it's loosened up with a bit of water and I just simply want to come across so I'm going to go make a mountain's top somewhere I'm dotting it in just to be sure is that what I want yeah because I'm using that picture as a reference but I'm not copying it exact okay that's the line I want I'm happy with that everything's a-okay so this is going to be here we go we're, we're getting that edge nice and tight and sharp turn your brush around that's why I dried the sky we don't want it mudding up into this come across here just don't soak the living hell out of your brush. If you need to wet it a bit more to get that paint to transfer, wet it, but don't soak the living buggery out of it, okay? It's the worst thing you can do. Okay, and we're, I'm just making it artistically jagged at the top there in sort of rock ways. And once I've got this top done, we'll just block it all in, okay? That wasn't too hard. Make sure you dry everything now. Each layer can get dried as you go. So I want to start blocking this in. And now I want to dry that so the other colors are not going to mud up with that, okay? So that is dry and see the sky colour? Later on we're going to mystify that over the top of this ridge here. So that's why earlier on I told you to keep your paints and spray them with water because we're going to need that later on and I'll show you why. Okay, I've cleaned that brush and I've flapped it dry. I've banged it against a stick. Now I've got my burnt umber here which is a bit darker value than that raw umber and we've got some black because we want to create some darker elements in that cliff face up there. So let's pick this up. Now you can either use a knife. I'm going to try this two inch brush and see how we go. So I pretty much want some, I'm just going to sort of dark element there like that. How did that go? I'm trying to talk in a way that it sounds like I know what I'm doing. Hey? <laughs> anyway, we're dribbling that. If anything, I'm keeping 
um, layers in, in this, um, the way I'm incorporating this paint now, because it's the way it is in the, um, the picture, so the rocks are kind of layered. So I'm just using this brush, it's got a wide footprint on it, and we're going to add some darker elements into all here. This is the burnt umber, which is darker than that raw umber. I'll get mainly the top there, some scalloping down. I'm just going hell for leather here, I'm not really thinking. I've seen the reference, I've had a look in my head and worked out what I need to try and do. Coming down here and on the other side as well and then we're going to add some black we don't have to dry this it's going to have water here too don't forget that's why I dried the first layer all this will be mixing up and mudding up and you'll be thinking my god what's going on here oh do I like art don't I what have I done Anyway, now I'm just going to get the black on the tip of this brush now. I haven't dried any of that because it was pretty dry on there. And now I want to, where are we? I'm using it like an edge there. I want to get some darker values mixed in here. And I'm just trying to get that because this is going to have um, bits of snow laying within the crevices. It's not heavy snow. I'm just, if you have a better way to make a cliff face, by all means do it. My way isn't the only way. Your way is a way you can do it in your art, okay? Blend that out a bit. See, I'm hitting it a bit hard. Look, I better take it easy. I'm pulling the white paint off the canvas there, and there's nothing under there. The... So we've got our darker elements scattered through there the way you want them. So now we'll pick up some of the craft paint, and it's going to leave your brush the way it was, and it's going to add. A lighter value now that we can slowly but surely get in here in a roundabout way but don't kill it with this we want to kind of I don't know just find the actual shape of this these rocks with this color paint we're using now so I'm just going to try and oh, get on there watch your tutorial and no paints coming off your brush my god here we go, we'll try and find some sort of light reflecting off these rocks. Where else have we got? I don't know, I've put some, in my mind I've had a ridge there, something there. Don't overdo it with this, see how I'm doing it very, very gently. Now in here we've got some, where are we, bits like that. This isn't the snow. The snow is going to be nice and white, yeah, nice, lovely and white, yeah, like that. Just when you're doing it as well, um, you'll have your own ways and habits how you hold your brush. See, I just wiggled down there like that because I got nervous. Uh, just pretend you're an artist. If you haven't in your mind become an artist yet, well, just pretend you are and all your movements start happening with fun, love and joy. Look at that. That's looking all right, eh? That ain't too shabby, I reckon. All righty, I've given all that a bit of a blow dry. Now, come down to my palette down here, because now I'm gonna use a little, I'll call it a scrumbler brush, but it, it does little bits of blending. So this was a flathead brush in its day, but it's soft, it's like a little mop now. So that sky color, I just wanna pick some of that up into the brush and contaminate the brush. And over here, I'll wipe it off. Because see, what we're going to do, I'll show you on my backboard here. We're going to get the sky now. Start within the sky lightly, lightly, and start bringing some fog over the top of your mountain. If you feel you're rubbing into that brown too much and it's mudding up, 
stop and blow dry it again some more. It's got to be pretty dry for this. And this will give us our sky mystifying over the the top of that mountain. And you're, the more you do this, you'll get more better at judging how much to put on your brush and how to blend it down your painting there, okay? I'm starting in the sky. And I'm touching very lightly. And as I feel the paint wear off this little brush, I will rub a bit heavier. But you want it to look like smoke or mist or fog, which in this case it's fog. Mix your brush around a bit. Don't create a, a one blended pattern on within your painting, have it all mixed up a bit. And this is just a way to sink the top of the height of this cliff face into the sky there. I will pick up a bit more, bring some darkness of it here and bleed the sky back into that now. So I'll pick up some more, right, dab it on there. I'm coming from the sky and into that again. Okay, you really want to hide 80% of that top line and we'll try and, you watch, I'll put a band of fog coming across there. It's so easy. Okay, so we've finished this stage. Now we just want to have some snow sitting within these ridges here and there on this cliff face. And how I'm going to approach that, I've got a flathead brush. Okay, I'm going to use it like a knife. Why I say I'm going to use it like a knife, I just feel I've got more control over it. Like, so I'm picking this up on the edge. I want to use it. Chisel it on the edge there. Now you can look at your reference picture and get some sort of idea. So I want some sort of... See why I'm using this? It can sit in ridges. And we need to keep darks within different bands of it. So that's some typical snow sitting on the edge of this okay and i'm going to leave some you know we can have the way it is in the picture that's why i'm doing it this way and it looks real so i'm leaving some dark some of that don't have to be straight lines maybe another thick one here and we'll stand back and have a look at this oh don't want those teardrops on there have a look at the yeah that looks like snow sitting on a rock cliff edge the only bits that were able to grab on because the rest were too heavy and fell down to the ground all right look at that we've got a bit there and this is just more art so don't want to go too high within that mist that we've done there just tap it on there a little bit tiptoe through that rocky face edge there and we're putting more on now, there's quite a bit sitting in the middle, so we'll, I'll just whack that there. He's bombed on. Look at that, how easy it is, eh? What can we call this as well? We need to name our babies, don't we? Um, this can be um, Cliff Lake Ridge or something like that, because it's a cliff. It's going to have a lake at the bottom, and it is a ridge. Um, well, in my eyes, it's a ridge anyway. Um, there we go, we got that there. See how easy that was? It's just snow sitting within the mountain, within the cliff, and you've created it. Now practice a lot of these procedures. And you early beginners, if you never heard me say it, practice what you're gonna do. quickly get a lot of this snow finished off on here and then I'll just where some of the big sheets of snow are laying I probably just want to put some darker shadowy elements within that that'll be water out here okay if you know what I mean um, there's some sheets coming down there I don't know 
Okay, we're pretty much finished that. So picking up some of the raw sienna uh, and I put a little bit of white in it, like well, I've already got the darker values there, so what I'm needing is just some lighter values. If you think you don't need this in yours, don't even put it there. I'm just doing this. Some people can do it and some cannot. It's that, that easy. So we're just putting some lighter values within those dark bits just to make all the ridges and pockets of this scalloping down. I won't get too carried away with it, but I know that it's one of those things you can't stop doing. <laughs> there we, you can see what that's done. And probably the one above it looks a little bit on the naked side as well, so we could probably put some elements of light and darks under that. How's that looking the monitor? That's all right, that's all right, something here. Okay, I'm going to leave it. Now we've done as much as we can there. I've dried it because I want to lace in the lake water. And I've sprayed this with some more water. I want to use the leftover sky colour and hopefully I don't have to mix up some more. But if I do, well, so be it. And I want to lace in the water, so I'm going to come up to about there. Now with these lakes, don't ever come down your page. I see a lot of beginners doing that problem. I'm going to get this on first. I might have to dry it again because I can see it really rubbing into that brown. But when you start bringing your water here, then come there and then bring your land to it. You've got that corner in your horizon line or on your seascape, landscape, riverscape, lakescape. And you'll see that behaviour in a, a lot of beginners' works. So I've been guilty of it in my past. So I'm going to dry that now. Okay, let's get this in there. So I'll paint this on there. This is the colour I want the water to be, not that brownie mud colour that was up against there. So that's why I've done that and dried it. Okay, we've got our water. Now, I'm just dampen the brush a bit. I want to bring it up to the bottom of that mountain there where I had that first piece, okay? So let's see if we can get that on without pushing, because when I went this way, it pushed too much into the paint. So I just got to persevere with it. Because there's a lot on my brush, but it's not getting there. All right, now, I've done that, I want to get some yellow oxide just to create a shallow edge over here. So I'll just pick up some yellow oxide on here. I didn't even clean the brush, it's just something that's going to mix with the watercolour there. A little emulate sand that's under there, so I'll probably come about here. I'm not going to go all the way across the bottom, I'll probably come from the middle and up there a little bit. That's where I want my shallower edge to be. And this will make sense once it's done. So that's the shallower part of the water all the way across there that's it beautiful so we'll just add a bit of um interest i'm going to grab i've got a flat filbert brush it's a soft one i want to just get one side loaded up with the burnt umber the darker of the browns okay and the other side with some of that soft flow white come up to your easel the white's at the top and let's practice a bit too white make it a bit darker yeah, you want some dark. We're going to scallop in just some simple rocks over here. So let's put some of those in. We can do a, lots of little ones out there if you want. This requires practice doing these. Get some more dark on there. A little bit more light. And I'm obviously going to bring them more over here when I get to the bigger shallower edge but cross bond them in and that color we used for the sand the shallow area let's put some rocks here get rid of that we want to create some uh, what do you call it depth shadow a bit too bright there that'll do Alright, you've done that. 
like I'm trying to say to you, I'm trying to talk is let's add some depth. So I'm picking up the yellow oxide and in the middle of some of these stones, I'm just sort of putting, I don't know, that's, what do you call it? Artistic brush strokes. Just sink them down, get in the middle of them. I've done a bit over here just to see how it's gonna work. How's that looking in there? See, that's all right. It's added some different values into that shallower area. And we can probably bring it out here. All right, now we want to sit a lot of this snow coming over the water there. So I'm picking up some titanium white. I'm finding that brush I did the rocks for. That'll do me for now. And we want some of this now laying on top of that lake there don't do it in a point coming down you want to try and visualize it coming towards us so if anything I'm making some sort of reference to that that looks a bit the wrong way I want those shapes if anything straight or bending downwards not bending upwards let me see what that is looking like in the monitor there yeah I don't want it to look like water turbulating I just want it to look like the ice or the snow sitting on the semi frozen lake that'll do and we'll, we could probably put some over here cascading on the water Picking up some of those dark colours now, I just want to, I'll leave that snowy bit there, but say here, I want to just very carefully pull down in a very straight line, just like that, all right? Now this water, I want it merging with the bottom of the mountain there, not just a straight line, and I'm going to look for darker pockets just to pull straight down like that. You don't want this paint super duper wet. I might have to um, put some more snow at the base of this mountain just to make up for the voids in my reflections there. Come along here. How's that looking? Yeah, we'll get some along here as well. So that's going to go down there. See, I want to get rid of that flat line and have different areas of now just grabbing the white I want to put some sort of I'm going to cheat so all these bits here will have white coming down like that that white will come down that little bit there will glare down is that doing it? Yeah, that'll do it. See here, I've got there. That'll do it. Don't have the paint loaded on your brush if you can help it. And all this can be just coming down like that. Is that doing it? Yeah, yeah. I'll put some here. Some snow. Just so we've got some way of copying it down in the water there like that okay we'll just finish things off and i want to grab my flathead brush and we're going to grab a roll of paint on a knife now we want to kiss this water against the bottom there now if you find those lines are quite loud and you don't want them loud like me I don't want them loud I'll get the bottom of that line now with my flathead brush that's tainted with a bit of water and it just smears and blurs and taints that up with a bit of a film look at that so now we'll go again over here instead of having a big bright stampy line on your work 
like that, wipe that brush again, come under that line, get the flathead brush and blur the bottom of that line down. See, that, that looks better than a big, harsh, stampy line. Okay, I've done that. Now I'm just getting what's in the brush and gonna put some, try and keep them straight, just some light hitting the water. They're not too loud, but they're enough to sink the reflections down. Just like that, okay? better than a knife I feel. You can put some over these rocks because we want to make the illusion there underwater. Something like that. And we can put a signature on this. Now we'll just put our beautiful frame on there. Okay, that's not too shabby. The mountain landscapes, they go well in frames. We've got some misty high sky up there. We're sort of looking up at this mountain cliff face that's just been incorporated with nature's way of putting snow everywhere. We've got a lake in the front. It's totally different to the reference picture, but we used it as a guide to create this painting. Okay, make sure you look at the links in the description below. There's one for my art for sale and my video catalogue. There's a Patreons page link there as well, all right? Tell your friends if you like what you've seen today, but if you don't like it, tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.